Hey guys, it's uh, Quinlan here, and uh, I'm just on my Rogue on the first day of 4.1, and I can gladly say that it is a good time to be a Rogue. If you talent, right, if you go into, if you talent right, if you go into the Night Stalker talent in the Subtlety Tree, Stealth now essentially has no cooldown. It has a two second cooldown, and that's basically just the global cooldown, and you can use it again. It's incredible, and uh, I guess logic has gotten away from Blizzard, and now we actually move faster than normal when stealth. Look how fast I'm going! <laughs> I can catch anybody who's not mounted or has a movement speed increase right now. Because if you get the talent Quickening and get the talent Night Stalker, you are moving at 125% normal spe speed while stealth. And how ridiculous is that? It doesn't really make sense, but it's a good time to be a rogue. Alright, so I'm just going to commentate on a game of uh, Battle for Gilneas. And, by the way, wh how awesome is the new starting countdown for Battlegrounds and Arenas? It's ridiculously cool. The first time I saw that, I just flipped out. I actually thought it was an add-on. And I kept looking through to see, try and find out which add-on actually was doing that. And then I found that, and uh, that's just ridiculous. Alright, so, uh, changes that have happened to Rogues in 4.1 are obviously all the stealth changes. Uh, besides that, there's been a few other minor changes. The only really big one that applies to Assassination that I can think of, I might be wrong, there might be a lot of other ones, I just don't have them with me, is that Recuperate has gone up to 3% instead of your maximum health every 2 seconds, or not 2 seconds, sorry, every tick. And instead of 2%. And now the talent that originally got recuperate up from 2% to 4% now only goes from 3% to 4%. So that kind of, that talent kind of got nerfed, and now every rogue will be benefiting more from recuperate instead of just those that went into that talent, and I really don't like that. I might switch out of those talents and go into dealing 20% more mutilate and... uh garrot damage and that obviously is really important but just the fact I went with the recuperate talents before because it gave gives you also six percent more I mean six percent less damage taken while you actually have recuperate up and uh, I, I think that's really useful especially when you don't have a ton of resilience uh, which I, I do have a good amount of resilience now but back when I got that talent I didn't and also just like how much survivability I have like, if I can win a fight with any melee class, really, it's from uh, half health. And uh, speaking of that, I can win a fight with almost any melee class, except, apparently now, Frost DKs. Has, I, I want to know what everybody thinks about this, because I can't be the only one who's noticed this. My arena partners have noticed this. People in Battlegrounds have noticed this. Okay, how? What? I know that they buffed two damage dealing abilities of frost dk's but they are destroying in damage you go into a battleground a frost dk is winning by a million damage or more in some cases over the second dps which uh i mean damage dealer which actually usually happens to be me so i'm having such a rough time dealing with them in arenas i'd usually if i lost in damage it'd be like by some by some small amount like 50,000 or it could be more if say I was being kited by a mage the whole time but I did an arena match against a team with a frost DK and a warrior and a resto druid and we got down the resto druid but then the but then uh, they took down our healer too but then the frost DK just he he wouldn't die for one thing and for another thing he over doubled my damage, and I and we were both on melee targets the whole entire time, and it's ridiculous. I've never been beaten by that much damage by somebody in an arena. And every DK I see now is Frost, so or almost every DK. I'm not. I'm barely seeing Unholy anymore, actually, since 4.1 came out, and this is into the second day. But I'm seeing too many DKs. Is anybody else seeing that many DKs? Because I just did an Eye of the Storm a couple hours ago with eight Death Knights on the Horde side. Eight. And I'm pretty sure it went six Frost, two Blood. No Unholies that I saw. 
Okay, so I'm going to get back to the game for a couple minutes. Uh, if anybody was paying attention to what was actually happening, I'm very surprised that I survived against that warrior back then. I had really low health. Essentially, what happened was I had recuperate, which is up, which is necessary. Uh, I got the disarm, which stopped my damage, and I popped the defensive cooldown. And when that happens, I can stay alive against almost any melee for a very long time. Unless they, unless uh, they're using abilities which I can't dodge, or if I'm, or if I'm just using combat readiness and they deal too much damage, a lot of the time I can just survive indefinitely, and uh, that's that's incredible. I really like that about rogues. It's one of my favorite things, especially because on my warlock I only have a few defensive cooldowns, and when those are gone, I just feel so helpless. And it's nice to just have so much control as a rogue. So. Basically, I'm trying to keep this healer, this Druid Resto healer, away from the flags because everybody knows what a good healer can do at a, in a game like Battle for Gilneas or Rathi Basin. Because if the DPS are healed, they can keep people off the flag. So if one DPS can hold one healer off of off of a off of an area like mine or lighthouse. I really think that's worth it. Like as you can see, he gets there. There's three DPS, and he's just healing them all. And we would never be able to get the kill. So I stealth in and I start spamming Phantom Knives. And this is another air point where rogues are just incredible. Because I can stealth, I can vanish, or I can even put down a smoke bomb and get away into stealth. And w upon doing that, I can just wait 5 or 6 seconds for them to all start capping. And then uh, Phantom Knives again. And then I can put a smoke bomb and they can't hurt me for a couple seconds. And then Phantom Knives again. And as you can see, if I have all my defensive cooldowns up, I can keep them off the flag while doing a ton of damage because melee damage spreads my poisons out. And because I'm assassination, I'm completely into mastery and my poisons deal, I think, 53% extra damage. And that's a fair amount. Uh, so, But obviously, I couldn't survive there forever. So I'm just going to quickly cut to the point after I res because I was in that graveyard for... 20 or so seconds, 20, 30 seconds, and no one really wants to see that. Uh, Alright, so I'm just going to give a quick update on my Warlock, because people really like his videos. It appears more to my Rogue. I'm hoping to get more Rogue fans eventually, but uh, guys, I will have another Warlock commentary within a couple of days. I've completely changed my UI up, and it's taking a little bit of time to get used to it. And uh, basically, I was using a whole complete different UI configuration, Tuck UI, because I could, I liked how it looked, I liked all the special settings it gave me, like it told me how much damage I was dealing, how much money I had, just like everywhere, basically, it was like Titan panel, but like, smaller and easier to use, and it, had, it just had a lot of useful features, but it was getting really glitched, especially on my Rogue and Shaman, where I couldn't edit out, I couldn't cancel, the what was being used on the main hand and all. So what that meant was I would either have to turn off the add-on for a second to say take flame tongue off my offhand weapon, or I would just have to wait out the 30 minutes or 60 minutes in the case of rogue poisons for the poison to wear off or just waste the poison by applying one. It wasn't so hard on my rogue, but it was more so difficult on my shaman because I couldn't get rid of the flame tongue no matter what I did and I know most of the time you want flame tongue but there are certain situations where wind fury frost band frost brand works uh works better and I know that it's really far in between where you would actually want to do that but it happens and I wouldn't want to I won't ever want to be in a situation where I lost a fight or I wasn't as uh I wasn't in the best position I could be in because of an add-ons Air. And so with 4.1, we got the ability to move the Blizzard unit frames. And so I just took this opportunity to just use the Blizzard UI along with a few other add ons. So basically, people have been asking a lot what add ons I use. And the dot one, the dot one is what everybody wants to know. I'm going to just say it here so nobody has to ask anymore. It's need to know need to know like I need to know what this is need to know you have to, you need to know what at dots you need to put up basically essentially uh, and 
it's a great add-on. As you can see, I have it set for rupture, recuperate, kidney shot, everything I use. Everything that's either a dot, it can it can track dots on myself, it can track my poisons, as you can see in the right of the uh, of the target uniframe there is a poison tracker and it tells me if they have deadly poison, it tells me if they have wound poison, it tells me if they have mind numbing poison and so that's really useful and it can do it for your focus target, it can do it for uh, trinket procs, it's an incredible add-on and I really suggest using it. It's better than any dot counter I've seen so far. Alright, so I just want to quickly talk about what just happened on the screen because I was getting focused down by five or six people. And what I did there was I had no health left. I procced my Battlemaster's Trinket, which gave me 15k, put down a smoke bomb. And so the only person who could hit me was the warrior and used a gouge. And in that moment, I somehow got lucky enough to get healed. And so I got to live in a situation where I would have obviously died. And that's something that really, well, I guess Frost Mages, but really only rogues could do. Stop five or six people from hitting you at once. Just long enough to get a heal off. And that's something that's really great. If you're a rogue and you don't know the merits of Smoke Bomb too much, there's just, there's just way too many to count. Really, the main merit you need to know, and this is huge for arenas, it's huge for twos, less so for threes. Because the other DPS can, uh, can fear, or I mean, f not fear, CC, CC you, so you stop the damage. But what Smoke Bomb can do in the twos match is you just get the DPS, it, you're attacking the DPS, you get five combo points on him, you drop a Smoke Bomb, you kidney shot to make him stay in the Smoke Bomb, and then there you go. The healer can't touch him. He's yours for five seconds, and if you're on a double DPS team, that's even better, because you both have five free seconds of no heals, so that's when you'd want to pop all your uh, attacking cooldowns, that's when we pop all our attacking cooldowns, and nine out of ten times, we can get the kill, except against uh, targets like, targets that either get out of the CC, or get out of the smoke bomb. It's really hard to do against warriors, specifically because they can heroic leap right out if they get one chance. And other classes can do things like that too, but it's, it's the toughest against warriors. Alright, so what's happening in the game now is I'm we're losing. Uh, it's not going too well for us, but I'm just trying to uh, keep taking places. And I immediately get on the Moonkin. Because just if you let a moon can free cast in a battleground, the amount of damage they will do is ridiculous. Along, not even just from Starfall, just from their trends and their dots, and if they get an eclipse going, and they get all their casts, they can nuke down someone so quickly. So I always try and take out a boonkin right away. So basically, we're just trying to take back the lighthouse. Because uh, in the chat log, someone's saying how we, they can't get out of the lighthouse area. And the lighthouse is probably one the most important place for the alliance to have. Just like the mines is for the horde. Because you can trap the people who res on the boat. Especially now that 4.1 started, guys. Because uh, if you didn't know this, now say you die at... Say you own lighthouse. And say you own waterworks. And you die at waterworks. You will respawn at lighthouse. And so... If you only own one, say you own Waterworks and don't own any other base, if you die at Waterworks, you will respawn right back at the boat, or right back at the uh, little village that the Alliance start at. Uh, and when that happens, the enemy team could easily just take Waterworks and then just box you in and three cap. And I've seen this, I've seen this happen now. We've been caught up at the tower and we've caught the horde up at the boat. And, uh, I don't know, it might be something they take back, like, if anybody remembers the 5 second cap time in, for a few days in Battle for Gilness and, uh, Arathi Basin. And that was just, that was just crazy, because rogues, rogues especially, I was so happy during that time, because Cloak of Shadows and Smoke Bomb last for 5 seconds. So, if there, say there's one caster, and he's 30 yards away from you. That's far enough to cast, cast, but you proc Cloak of Shadows, and you start capping the flag. And he's casting on you, but nothing can hit you for five seconds. No spells. 
So he has to realize this and run up to you and melee you within five seconds. And that was just crazy. It never happened. So that's why, uh, that's why they obviously took that back as soon as possible. As you can see in that last fight too, I got an achievement for one cap and one defense. And that's an achievement that was recently just made easier. It used to be a lot harder to get. And uh, I think it was 3-3, three and three, like Arathi Basin, but I'm not sure. I think Arathi Basin is actually 3-2. and two. I'm not sure. You, I, don't know, I don't know all this information just off the top of my head. Alright, so... I skipped, the, I skipped the part about me dying. I mean, I didn't die, just I skipped the part about me choosing where to go next because I was kind of undecided for a couple minutes. It was a really bad move on my part. And this is right near the end, and I'm re really what I'm doing here is highlighting the amount of, assassination, of damage an assassination rogue can do by spamming Phantom Knives. As you can see, just I'm getting huge amounts of damage off this, and my poisons are being applied, and I'm just dealing so much damage. And it's so great, and I love doing this because you're just keeping so many people from capping. As you can see, there are people on the flag. They have been trying to cap in the past, and for a very long time, you can keep them off the flag.